Should you upgrade to Xiaomi Gen 6 from a previous version? We discussed this in a recent interview on this channel with Andy Mediaman 3 d Soderberg, the creator of the Xiaomi Master Suite. This is part of a bigger playlist which I've also linked down in the description. In those videos we talk about how the Xiaomi Master Suite came to life, what's new with Xiaomi Gen 6, the new part cooling ducts, design principles and compromises, as well as the new monetization of the documentation through Patreon, and finally the future of Xiaomi, what new things are coming. So let's jump right into the interview to see whether you should upgrade to Xiaomi Gen 6. The changes that you described, I think it's a, it's a great improvement. The question although is, if I already have a previous version, would you say that like it is recommended to switch or like where's the point where okay. I actually need to switch to Xiaomi so, Gen 6? That's the thing. If you've already got a Gen 5 built because everything is backward and forward compatible, mm -hmm. all these positions and mounts are identical. Mm -hmm. You Again, there's a big improvement in the cooling duct. So I would say if you've got a Gen 5, just reprint, reprint the cooling duct mm -hmm. and mount it to your Gen 5 and you'll get the better performance from the new duct. But if you do, and we all end up getting jams and, and clogs, and we've all seen online the, the huge, you know, blob monsters, you know, that happen. <laughs> okay, uh, so. um, and you have to disassemble oh, yes. the hot end to, to get at it. Having the Hiromi Gen 6 with threaded inserts makes it very fast and, and easy to disassemble and reassemble for maintenance. Because I see. you don't so have probably in the next time, maintenance. like you have to do some maintenance is a good time to, to switch yeah. the base at least. Yeah. Yes, if and you have to do maintenance, stuff. I would suggest replacing the base. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, if you've got a Gen 5 all set, uh, the only thing I'd recommend updating uh, uh, is is to start by just reprinting the new ducts because you'll get better mm -hmm. cooling. That's the other thing in, in this design. I want to really talk about the manufacturers. You know, people are trusting that that these manufacturers are, are making a great design and, and they're mm -hmm. getting better and they're better. But in the case of part cooling, it's always been an afterthought. They just slap on the cheapest fan, a 4010 radial fan with a very cheap little duct to point some air down there, and it's a checkbox for them. You know, okay, we got that feature done. They've done literally no design work, with the exception of maybe Prusa in, in, in Europe, although mm -hmm. I've improved on Prusa's ducting. But the, the Chinese uh, manufacturers uh, that are all really derivatives and clones of each other, mm -hmm. it's, it's a checkbox. And so you really don't get great part cooling from those designs. And that's really why this all started in the first place is we wanted to improve on sure. what, was, what was there. With the with the Hero Me, you can uh, do extreme overhangs at the 70, 80 degree level. And uh, in fact, there's a couple of videos on YouTube and I've done it at 300. You can do bridging. I've done 300 millimeters to two towers, bridging across 300 millimeters with no supports and no sagging. Right, that, that's That's the, powerful. That's powerful. And and, uh, and, <laughs> and 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 finally, the the extra benefit when you do dual fans mm -hmm. is I never run these more than forty percent power, so they're whisper yeah. quiet. I mean, either yeah. So maybe with the exception, but maybe I'm making a mistake there. So a bit of bridging, I I, I use them at a higher speed. I think seventy percent, but I think it's like actually blowing the bridge more into a certain direction or blowing so, it out of yeah, the way. For, uh, that's for, not a good for thing. overhangs and bridging. I will spin the speeds up to maybe 60, 65%. Uh, percent. Okay. So uh, I'm not uh, that wrong, actually. <laughs> yeah, you're, not, you're not too wrong. Again, okay. you know, every different fan manufacturers varies. And so it could be that you might have to scale back a bit more because you might have faster fans than others. So again, you know, fans are out there. You can get as cheap as two bucks, but really high quality fans uh, from um, Sunon, the Maglevs, and Delta, they're, they're 10 to $15 a piece. And they are really powerful, so you can run them at even even lower speeds. Uh, so that, that's also a variable is you know is what your yeah. source of fan is. That was part three of my interview series with Andy Soderberg about the Hiromi Suite. In the next part, which I've linked here for you, we're talking about whether the Hiromi setup is too heavy to run direct drive on a 3D printer at fast speeds. Thanks for watching, and I see you in the next video.